Okay, so if you want to create a Google Doc, the first thing that you want to do is go to docs.google.com in your browser. And that'll bring you to the starting page of Google Docs. And there's just a few things I want to point out here. You might not see anything in the recent documents if this is your very first time. But what you will see here is two different options to start with. You can start with a blank document, which is what we're going to do. Or you can start with a template. These templates will have a little bit of content and some styling done in them already. And they could be super helpful, but we're going to start from scratch so that we can show you what to do. So I've left clicked on blank and it brings up this clean slate. There's no title yet, so let's go up to the title and let's just give it the name of tutorial. And once you type it, if you click out of it, it's saved with that new name in the cloud in your Google account. You don't have to go to file and save. There is no option to save here because every time you type or change something, it's saved automatically. So let's get out of that menu, left click on the document again. And the blinking cursor means that it's just waiting for you to type. Some of the basic formatting is already done for you. So there's a standard font selected, standard font size, and it's waiting for you to type normal text. So normal text would be the body of the document. So if I take my mouse and I left click and drag, this is the way that you select text if you want to change all of it. And let's just say that this is actually going to be the title. Go up to where it says normal text. These are preset styles and let's just change it to a title. Sorry guys, that's actually the title of the document. And then at the end of the line, when you're done with that line, you're ready to start a new one. If you hit the enter key, then Google knows that you've moved on and it's back to normal text again. So let's say actually this is the body of the document. I'm going to do a second line here as another paragraph and I'm going to use this to show you a few things. So if you notice the spacing in between the title and the first paragraph is a lot larger than this first paragraph and the second paragraph, that's all controlled by these styles, but you can also control them by going to format and line spacing. If you want more or less space before and after your paragraphs, it's much better to do them here than doing something like if you go to the right and you press enter again. So at this point we have the title and we have some body text. We're going to add a few more things and it's going to make it easier to see what's going on if we go to view and let's just open up the document outline. It's going to come on the left hand side and it's going to show you the different parts of your document. Let's go to the beginning of the body. And we want to insert a line above the body text and below the title. So I'm going to type the enter key right now. This is giving us a space in here. Let's go into that space and we're going to say part one, the start of it all. And I want this to be a header. So go to where it says normal text, these are your styles and let's get it a heading one. And as you can see, the document outline is starting to build out right now. So here's your title. If I click on that, it'll bring the cursor up to it. And if you go down to part one, it'll bring the cursor down there. Now, admittedly, if you only have one heading and one title, the outline is a little bit excessive right now because you can see what you're doing. As you start to build out your story, the outline is going to be a little bit more helpful. So if you have a second header, now you're going to start seeing it there. Let me go back to the body text. I'm going to hit enter again, and I'm going to put in another type of header. Let's make this a heading two. And if you look at the document outline, it's going to be helpful. It's going to indent the second header because it's a heading two. And then when you go back to heading one, it's going to be more of a main part of it. So if you ever do a table of contents, it's going to look a lot like your outline. This is going to give you a preview of the structure. Now I'm going to bring up a document that has a lot more text in it so we can go over a couple of different things that you might want to change. So let's go to file. And I brought it up here. I just called it example document so you know what it is. So this is an example document and I have a few different things going on here. So one of the things is there's a heading one, which we went over. Then there's some body text. But then I had another header and I wanted to put it on a second page. If I scroll down, you'll see it. But I didn't just hit enter 
a bunch of times until it went on the second page. If you do that and you add text later, it's going to push everything down and create a problem. You actually want to go to insert break and do a page break. It's already done. So if I do it again, it'll actually have two page breaks, but that's the proper way to add another page. If you backspace, it'll get rid of it. So I'm just do that. Now I only have two pages again. And if you look at these paragraphs, I'm going to highlight all three of them by left clicking with the mouse and dragging. These are justified on the right, but the last one isn't. So there's two different types of alignment going on here. Let's select the third paragraph and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So the menu bar shows all the options and let's look at the different alignments. If I left click on a line, the first two paragraphs are justified. And if you look at this little icon, you see that the right hand side's lined up, but this paragraph is left aligned. If you justify these, it'll add a tiny bit of space in between each word, just enough so that it pushes the right hand side to be equal. And if we want to apply that to third paragraph as well, just go to alignment, click justify. And there you go. That's done. There's no inner key after each of these lines. You just keep typing, use your spaces and letters as usual, and then you apply the styling afterwards. If you try to do that by using the space bar and the inner keys, things won't work out very well for you. If you want to do some custom styling, let's just uh, select this first paragraph and let's say, Hey, this normal text styling is great, but I really want it to be italicized. You can control all of those attributes by these options that are in the middle of the menu bar. So we could just select italics, click on it. Only the paragraph that you highlighted will be italicized. If you also want the second one to be exactly like this first one, just go to the first paragraph, click on the format painter, and then go to where you also want to apply that style, select it, and it'll paint the format from the first paragraph onto the second paragraph. So the last basic thing that I want to go over that Google Docs will do for you is that it will format a list, sleeping bag and a pillow and a tent are the types of things that I want for this weekend. This is a list of things. And if it's fine this way, then, then just leave it. But there's a couple different options on how you can make it look like a list. So I've left clicked, I've selected all three of the lines so that Google Docs knows what I'm wanting to format. And my options are that I can create it as a numbered list. And if I use this little drop down, there's different types of numbered list. So you can have main steps be a number and then sub steps be a letter and so forth. Or you could go over to just the bulleted list option. I just left clicked it. You can see that it applied it and there's different types of bulleted lists as well. So the one that I've applied, if a sub, if you use sub item, it's going to be an open circle. So let's add one here so you can see it. So I'm going to press enter after sleeping bag. Then I'm going to press tab. That's going to get me to a second level of this list. And we want it to be a warm sleeping bag because it's the fall and it's going to get down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit tonight. And as you can see, we made a beautiful document. That's all the basics that you need to know to type a paper and have it look good. Okay. So we're using Google docs and we're going over the formatting options for a document. Let's focus on this first paragraph. So if we want to have of uh, just a first line indent. So if you hover over this rectangle and the triangle, it's going to show you the top one's first line indent. And the bottom one is the left indent for the entire paragraph. So if you have the regular looking mouse icon, you're on one of those two. If you go up a tiny bit more, you're going to get that left, right arrow, and that's changing the margin. We're going to circle back to that in a minute. Right now we're going to be on first line indent. If I use the left mouse key and I drag it over to a half an inch, that's going to do just what hitting the tab button does. It'll give you a first line indent on this paragraph and only on this paragraph because it's all that you had selected. If you want it on others, select all those paragraphs before you do it. And if you want the entire paragraph to be indented on the left or the right, let's do the right this time, go over to the triangle, left click on it and drag it. We'll move that an entire inch. We start at six and a half. Let's go to five and a half. And there you go. That's changed the indentation for that paragraph. But if you want to do this for the entire document, you would do that by changing the amount of this gray area. Now this gray area is called the margin. It's not called the indentation. 
And the easiest way to get to it is by going to file and then page setup. And these are your default settings. And sometimes the left might be larger than the right, especially if you want to accommodate for something like hole punches, if you're back in 1985. And this is where you can also change your orientation. So if you want it to be on its side, if you will, which would be landscape, you do that here, uh, oriented the other way. Go back to page setup. We'll change it back to portrait. But if we wanted to change the left margin to three inches, do it here and it will change it on the entire document, not just a particular paragraph. We're going to change that back by just doing undo. And let's move our page orientation back to portrait. Here it was on landscape. Let's move it to portrait. And we're back to where we started. If you wanted some of your content to be in columns, let's select, say, these uh, three paragraphs and just go to format and choose columns. Let's put it in three columns and it automatically does it for you. There's a couple options that you can do that I, I think make it look a little bit better. If you go to columns and more options, you can put lines in between them. You could also change the spacing in between the columns. But if I click apply for the lines, it just makes it a little bit visually easier to see. And once you have the document looking the way that you want it, you might want to have page numbers or headers and footers. And those are pretty intuitive in Google Docs. The area above the beginning of the document body, if I hit my up arrow right now, I can't go any higher. That's where your header resides. And to get there, just take your mouse and you left click in it. So if you wanted this to the left, you would use the same alignment options to move it to the left. And if you wanted it bigger, let's say just change it to a subtitle and then type in what you want. By virtue of it being a header and not part of the body text, it's going to repeat on every page. So if I scroll down to the second page, that header is also on this page. But if you want the first header to be, uh, let's say blank, but you want a different header on the subsequent pages, you would just use that check mark and then go down to the second one and put in your header. And if we scroll down to page three, you can see that that header is going on all the subsequent pages. But if we go back to page one, you can see it's not on the first page. And one other thing that you can do that's a nice built-in function for Google Docs and can save you a lot of time is to insert page numbers. If you go to insert and header and page number, we've already done the header. You do a footer the exact same way. Just go to the bottom, but let's do page numbers. And for this particular document, let's say we don't want it to start numbering until the second page. Okay. But we want it in the upper right hand corner. Let's left click on that option. And you see we're on the first page and so nothing has shown up there. If I scroll down to the second page, it starts at one and then gave me a two on the third page. Now, another thing that you might want to format on your document, and we'll just do it on this second paragraph is the line spacing. If you go up to the format and you go to that line spacing option, there's a couple different things going on here. So the default is at 1.15. And what that's doing is putting enough space in here so that your eye can read the text without it looking cluttered. So you can change it to single. If you need to squeeze in a lot of typing, this is going to be a little bit harder to read, but you see it's still, it's not that bad. If you want to space it out, just choose double spacing. But an important thing to note here is that if you want more space before and after the paragraphs, I wouldn't do it by pressing the enter key more. So a shortcut way to do it, just hit the enter key, right? And you get more space here. I'm going to backspace. I'm going to undo that. And the better way to do that, because you're going to be doing it multiple times with your whole document is to change the spacing before and after the paragraph. Let's go to custom spacing to see this a little bit better. So there's your default spacing right now before it's zero and after it's 10, if you change the after to 20, see the amount of space. Now, if I click apply, gives you a little bit more. So those are your kind of next level options for formatting a document. 
part one, we showed you how to format the text and how to use default styles. So now we've gone over the paragraph styling and the page setup options. Okay, so if you're using Google Docs, there's a couple different built-in ways to use navigation within your document. We're going to go over inserting links, and then we're also going to use bookmarks to use with those links. And the first type of link that we're going to go over is an internal link to another part of the document that's just generated by the structure of the document. And I'll show you what I mean. We want to uh, link the day-to-day -day lives. Let's go to insert link to another part in this Google Doc. And it's already a heading, so we're going to left click on an arrow. And there's a header in my document that's called day-to-day -day lives. These other items are the first sentence in other paragraphs. I just filled it with Latin just so it wasn't distracting, uh, but that's where these are coming from. But we're gonna select the header day-to-day -day lives. We're gonna click apply. And now you need to change it to viewing mode to get it to work. So now I'm acting as if I'm viewing this document, not creating it. And when I hover over day-to-day -day lives, you'll see that the cursor will change to the, to the hand with the finger pointing out that indicates it's a link. If you left click on that, it'll bring you down to the section of the document that starts with this header. And that's all you need to do to link to a specific part of a document. But if you have a part of a document that you wanna to link to that is not the start of a section, we're gonna do that. Let's just say, we're gonna come back to editing. We're gonna highlight this sentence. And going to insert a bookmark and it's done, you'll see the little image of a bookmark here. We're gonna insert link. And now an option comes up for bookmarks. This wasn't here before because there were no bookmarks when I was looking for the headings. We'll select a bookmark, left click on the arrow to drop it down to expand bookmarks to see which ones are available. Right now we just have one. And we'll left click on that. So now this link is going to go to the bookmark that we just created. Let's click apply to put it in the document. We'll go back to viewing. And we're going to hover over more about their habitats. Left click on it, brings me right to that bookmark. So that's two different ways to control where internal links go to in your document. Another type of link is an outside link. We're gonna change it to editing. Let's link to allturtles.com, but we're going to mistakenly think that it's just turtles.com. We're going to go to insert link and Google's going to search for turtles.com but not find it. So it's going to suggest all turtles.com. Let's just think, oh yeah, it should have been that. So let's left click on all turtles.com. It fills out the entire web address of all turtles.com. You're going to see turtles, but it's going to link to all turtles.com. So we actually need to go in and correct this link and say all turtles.com and apply it, and let's get rid of this little all here just by deleting those three letters. And now you have an external link to a website. So let's change this to viewing and see how this works. So scroll back down to it, find it. We're going to left click on it, and what it'll do is just launch another browser window and bring you to allturtles.com. If I'm using Mac, it might use Safari. If I'm using Windows 10, which I'm using here, but if I have my default browser set to uh, Edge, it's gonna bring it up in that. All it is is a link, and your system's going to determine how it looks at it. And the last type of link that I'm gonna show you is a link to another Google document. And in this case, it's gonna be a Google Sheet. So we have some data in a spreadsheet here that I want to link to. We're going to go over to the spreadsheet that I'm talking about and let's just say it's this range. Really not about turtles, uh, let's just say it is. And we want to scroll down to get a link to this range, left click on that, it's going to paste it to your clipboard, Come back to your Google Doc, switch back to editing, going to re-highlight this data in the spreadsheet. Go to insert link, and in this case, we're going to just paste it in with the control V, where it says paste the link, and it will be the link 
to that Google Sheet and within that Google Sheet, this specific range, if you can actually see it in the URL right there, if you look closely, we'll click apply and go back to viewing, come back in here as if we're the reader, we're going to left click on the data in the spreadsheet and it's going to bring them to that range in this Google Sheet. So they'll see exactly what you're talking about. It takes a while to load, but it's on my screen now, although it still says uh, working. And the range that you link to is going to be highlighted. So you're going to show the reader exactly what you want to show them. So those are several different types of links that you can do and uh, using bookmarks for some of them. We're going to go through step by step how you insert a table of contents with page numbers or with links and how you get it to format right with uh, indentations in the different sections. So the easiest part, the first thing that you do is you just go to insert table of contents. And both of these are going to function exactly the same way as far as how we put them together. So for now, I'm just going to choose with page numbers. And at the end, I'll show you the links as well. And just there are a couple nuances about that. So I just inserted a table of contents in this entire area around inside the border is made dynamically. So you're not really supposed to edit this, but it, but it's produced from the formatting below. So how we're going to look at how this became the way it is with the sections here, subsections here, and the page numbers. The best way to look at that is that we're going to look at the document outline. So go to tools and go to document outline. And this is going to show you where your title is and where your headers, where your heading one and heading two are. What I'm talking about is this line is formatted. The style is title. Table of contents don't pick up titles. That's why it's not up here. The next one is formatted as a heading one. Table of contents is going to pick that up. And so is this section and this section. But if you go down to where these are indented and you look at the table of contents as well, they're indented. I didn't do that by creating table of contents and then hitting tab. Table of contents does that automatically because if I go down the kind replenish, it's a heading two. So if I make it a heading three, you'll see it indents even further. Go back up to the table of contents and you have to refresh it. So click in here and click the refresh button and it indent it even further. So if you just made a table of contents and you couldn't figure out why it looks so random, it's because it's being driven by the formatting. So let's go back down the kind replenish, make it a heading two. It'll bring it back to where it was before. And if you want to make this look like a regular table contents that you would find, I would probably insert a page break right after it. And you can even, even title it table of contents, but you'll see, I put that above the actual table content so it's not in the bordered area but you can also format items in the table of contents if you want to it's probably best practice to format it right in your document so it gets picked up but if you left click on it and you hit change you actually can change the name of the header here let see if i take that period off and i hit apply it doesn't actually change the document so you can customize your table of contents It also made that a link, which I didn't want it to. So just hit remove. So that brings us to the second table type of table of contents that we can do, which is let's just delete this one first. So let's just get rid of the entire table of contents by right clicking, doing delete table of contents. And I'm going to insert this page break again. I'll show you how you can insert a table of content with links. And there's just a couple things that work strangely about this. I'm in editing mode. You see that in the upper right hand corner. And if I go into the table of contents though, these links don't work. You can't click on them. It's because it still thinks you're creating table of contents. So you can change or remove it, but you can't actually click on it. But if you share this with someone else in a view only format, 
when they click, when they get this document and they're viewing it, they'll be able to navigate. So if you click on one of the lines, I had to double click that time, it'll go down to that header. So the table of contents with links is probably more useful if you think other people are going to be viewing this online. The table of contents with the page numbers is more helpful if you're going to distribute this in paper. And I hope that was helpful. If you find that tutorial helpful and you want to see others like it, you can subscribe to my channel in the lower right hand corner. Thanks.